knock again. I completely forgot this episode even existed until someone recommended it and then all the memories came rushing back to me and it is one of unfortunately way too many catfish cases where family are involved but let's get into it. It is season 2 episode 3 Ramon and Paula. This is very, very early on in the catfish days. Look at baby Neve and Max. So Ramon actually reached out to the show on his own behalf. He is 19 and he lives in Bullhead City, Arizona, which is wild. Like I've never heard of this. Granted, I haven't heard of a lot of places in the States because I'm not American. He says that he met a girl named Paula on Facebook and she lives in Delgona, Florida. He said that he's in love, but they've never met. Be fucking for real. Womp womp. <laughs> <laughs> this concept will never make sense to me how are you in love with someone you've never met but we move he said that his biggest fear is that she's a different person but then two seconds later he admits that paula said that she lied about who she is and then later said that she was joking and testing to see how much he loved her what the hell this concept of like testing people doesn't make any sense and if you ever try and test me i will sniff that shit out and intentionally fail the test because we don't need to be together if you feel like you need to test me. So Neve and Max are confused, they're bewildered, and they hop right on a video chat to try and figure all this out. We find out that Ramona and Paola have been together for about a year, and he was actually the one to reach out to her, which is kind of foreign in a catfish situation, but it's still a catfish situation nonetheless. He says that every time he tries to meet her, she pulls out an excuse. They actually Skyped one time, but he says that the person he video chatted with was a completely different girl than in the pictures, and yet he still believes that he's talking to the girl in the pictures. Oh, Lord. Ramon. Please be so fucking for real. Please. He said that he was shocked and upset, and when he texted her about it later, she said that she got her cousin to get on the camera because this was yet another test. She wanted to see if I loved her for her is what she was saying and not for her looks. Which, let's be real, that was the catfish coming on screen to see if you liked her, if you vibed with her, if you wanted to be with her, then she would have came clean. But you didn't, obviously, because you were shocked and upset. And so she went back into the metaphorical catfish closet that she crawled out of for the video chat. I just feel like, use your common sense. Maybe common sense is really not so common because this is very obvious, like, be real. And then he says that he loves her despite all of this, which, you're stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say it. You're dumb, you're really dumb. I'm sorry, but you know what? I'm not sorry. So Neve and Max hop off the call and they head to Bullhead City to meet Ramon, who is arguably the most naive person who has been on the show. Like, I understand you're only 19. But like, at 19, I had more sense than this. I know I had more sense than this. Ramon says that he is always thinking about Paula. He says that everything about her is perfect. Never came across anybody to be completely myself with. Which, two things. <laughs> They're a little, a little bit petty. You still have not met anyone you could completely be yourself with because you've never met this person. And how is it possible for you to love everything about her when you don't know everything about her because you haven't met her? You don't even know what she looks like. And even Max then look at Paula's Facebook page and her Instagram and it looks fake as hell. It's just giving catfish 101. Textbook catfish. Ramon then shows them the quote unquote cousin's Facebook page and Ramon seems somewhat hesitant to confirm that that's the girl he saw on the video chat, which is like, why? That's suspicious. That's weird. We then find out that naive ass Ramon sends Paula money regularly after she insinuates that she needs help so she never flat out asks like oh my god can i have 500 dollars?" she'll be like oh our phone's about to get cut off that being broke has got to be one of the worst feelings ever i we don't have any food in the house so he pays her bills he pays her family's phone bill and then on top of that he buys her gifts and he just sends it her straight up cash so he bought her a wii and he also bought her a new phone and then just when i was like feeling bad for calling him stupid we find out that he has given Paula his bank information. What? Yeah. Dude. So she can just go and take money anytime she wants. Lord have mercy. Mm -mm -mm. This is insane. You are a big dummy, or maybe a little dummy because you don't look very tall. You are a little dummy, Ramon. The guys are like, oh, what the fuck? So then they ask like, how much money have you sent her? And he says it's been a couple thousand dollars in straight up cash. Oh lord. This is actually insane for a couple of reasons, but the first one being earlier in the episode he mentioned that he does not have a car because he can't afford one and that he still lives at home because he can't afford to live on his own. See how 
different that looks or how unsafe. If you would stop sending a random girl over the internet all your money, giving her access to your bank account, maybe you would have money to do those things. And then Neve hits him with the very harsh reality check. You could have a car right now. Like if you were just smart, if you just used a little bit, a little, little tiny bit of common sense, you could have those things that you said you can't afford. You can afford them, but you cannot afford to support yourself and also support some random girl and her family. If you like it, I love it, says a black woman who neither likes or loves it. But also like just gonna keep it 100% with you right now. If I was this catfish, I would, I would have probably just kept it going even if I wanted to come clean because you're sending me lots of money and gifts. I don't have to work. You're my job. I'm not saying that's right. I'm not saying it's moral, but I can feel like this is part of the catfish's mindset. He then says that he did it because he loves her and that's the way that he shows love and I don't have much to say about this because one of my love languages is cold hard cash. So there's no judgment from me on that. Ramon says that he wants to find out the truth because he loves her. So Neve and Max then head out and get to investigating. Max says that it's pretty safe to assume that the cousin, her name is Loida, is the catfish, but they don't know for sure. So they get to investigating to confirm what they know to be true. They just need a little bit of proof. They, of course, start by reverse image searching Paula's Facebook pictures, but nothing comes back for any of them, which is kind of weird. because it's like, obviously the pictures are stolen, but where are they stolen from? So then they go to Instagram and Max notices that she posts on Facebook about Ramon all of the time, but on Instagram, she has nothing to say. So they're like, hmm, something is not adding up here. So then this is when they were doing their real investigative work. They're like, okay, we don't have any conclusive answers yet. So they decide to Google her Instagram username and it leads them to another Facebook page. But this profile is obviously real and she doesn't mention Ramon at all. Max deduces that the Paula Provost Facebook page and the Ola Paulo Instagram page are real, but the Paulo Rodriguez page is fake, the one that Ramon has been talking to. Which as a catfish, I feel like that's so risky to send the real Instagram page of the person whose pictures you stole and just hope that the person you're talking to never messages them on Instagram. So they send a message to Paula Provost, the real Paula, asking her to reach out and potentially video chat just to confirm that like, you're real. <laughs> so the next morning, Neve has a message from the real Paula and she agrees to video chat. So they get on the call and they quickly fill her in on everything that's been going on. Awesome. And it's clear that like, this is the real girl in the pictures, but it's not the girl who Ramon has been speaking to, which duh, we knew that from the very beginning of the episode, but. Okay, the real Paula then informs us that she has a boyfriend. Um, I have a wife here. And that she's never spoken to Ramon. I'm sorry to him. This makes it very, very clear because the guys actually recorded this part of the conversation so they could show it to Ramon so he could no longer be the Lulu in denial. So they head over to Ramon's to fill him in on everything and Neve straight up tells him like, Your relationship with Paula is going to change after we show you this stuff. Which I'm like, why don't you just tell him that? His relationship never existed in the first place, but okay. Ramon says that he's ready for whatever it is, and I don't believe that for one second. How could you now be ready for whatever it is when you already know what it is? I think it makes sense. They get right into telling him their findings and show him the real Paula's Facebook page, and Ramon looks extremely pissed. Then Neem and Max show him the video, and he looks like he wants to cry, which makes me feel bad, but also like, sir... <laughs> Clearly this was a catfish that you were talking to from the very beginning. I feel like they didn't really make a really good effort to try and hide any of it. Let's be so fucking for real. That's the theme for this video. Be so fucking for real, Ramon. Say it with me now. Be so fucking for real, Ramon. Ramon says that it's fucked up that she's been lying this whole time. He's right, but as I said before, if I were this catfish, I'm not saying that like I would ever do this because I would never do some shit like this to anybody. But if I were her, I would have a hard time giving up the grift too, especially when you are so adamant about being the Lulu in denial about what, what it is. Ramon says that he wants to see and confront the person who did all of this, so Neve steps out to call Catfish Paula. She answers right away, and she seems mad that Ramon gave her number to Catfish. Ramon Which I'm like, that's crazy. It's always a tall tale sign that a tell, tell tale, tall tale, a tell tale sign. It's never a good sign when the catfish gets mad that catfish contacted them because they know that they're a catfish. Because why are you mad? I mean, you are a catfish, yeah? This is when I think Neve was more coy 
he was trying to control his anger so he asks if she knows anyone named Loida and this girl acts like she didn't hear him named what? Loida no and it's obvious that she's lying but shit she's been lying to Ramon for a year now so why would she be honest about anything to anyone Niamh has had enough of the bullshit already and he straight up asks her if she's Loida she says that it's complicated I don't really feel comfortable talking about it over the phone Miss girl, you felt comfortable scamming this man? You felt comfortable taking money and gifts from him? Pretending to be someone else over the phone? But when someone figures out who you are, you're like, I, I don't want to talk about this over the phone. Bitch, I don't care if you want to talk about it over the phone. We're going to talk about it over the phone. I said what I said! But Neve says okay. He then asks if they can meet face to face since she doesn't want to talk about it over the phone. And she says that she has to make some serious adjustments to her work schedule. Clap if you care. All right, let's move on. Girl, we do not give a single fuck what you need to adjust. We don't care. Figure it out. She says that she is not trying to hurt Ramon and Neve rubbed salt in that wound by saying, This is somebody who has completely dedicated themselves to you. He's very hurt. Like, girl, it doesn't matter what you were trying to do. Ramon is now very hurt. You did it. It's done. So what do we do now? Neve asks her once again to agree to meet up and it's silent for a couple seconds and then she agrees. So the next day the crew flies out to Florida and the morning after that they head out to confront the catfish. But sidebar, is it a catfish if you know who the catfish is and they've told you who they are? I guess we'll find out. So they pull up at the house and Neve does a very calm, a very tame knock on the door and no one answers. So now I see why he started to implement that heavy, heavy police knock because no one's gonna answer to a light on the door. You gotta bang that shit. What? That's what she said. And after waiting and being like, do we knock again? What do we do? Paula comes out and says, Hi, Ramon. Ramon looks pissed. Which, okay, because we find out that the catfish is Loida, but now she looks mad. I'm just so confused as to what she could possibly be mad about besides the show ruining her scam, ruining her steady third job, her steady income. I just don't. Why are you mad? This episode is just a whole lot of confusion and a whole lot of what the fuck is even going on right now. So Lloyda says that she made the fake page out of boredom and she wasn't trying to meet anyone off of it, which the lie detector determined that that was a lie because even if that's not what your intention was, that's not what you were trying to do, you still did that. So your intention doesn't matter. She then shrugs and is like, I'm sorry. I mean, but you and I, we know besties that she's not the least bit sorry. She doesn't care at all. Ramon then gets ballsy and asks her about the money and the stuff that he gave her. He asks her if she'll pay it back and technically, like not to be devil's advocate or anything, but everything he gave to her was a gift. She didn't ask for any of it. It was never a loan. She was never told that like, yeah, I'm gonna give you this, but you have to pay me back type of deal. So while it would be completely immoral and wrong for her to keep everything, she's within her right to do so. Neve is pissed and he hops in and he says that Ramon deserves an explanation. And Loida hits us with the same old tired ass catfish speech that she didn't think anything was going to happen, that everything about their relationship was real but the picture. Oh my god. That's another lie. <laughs> like, these people are, oh my gosh, this shit. <sighs> this girl. Also, I just do not trust POC who wear blue eye contacts. I <laughs> There's something about it, I just don't trust you. It gives self hatred, and I will not dive further into this. But if you know, you know, you understand. She then, instead of being like, yeah, you know what, that's messed up, and I'm sorry for doing it, she gets mad at Ramon. You spent over 3,000 freaking dollars on me. I'm about to beat this bitch up. Do you not think I don't feel bad? I'm surrounded by that every single day. Girl, what? If you felt bad, you would have told him. You would have stopped accepting the gifts. You would have stopped insinuating that you needed money. You would have told him not to give out his banking information. That's the craziest part of all this shit, that he gave his bank information to a random person he does not even know. I wouldn't even give my banking information to people I do know. She then says that she- I tried to come clean. You tried to come clean. You know I tried to come clean. And every single time, Ramon acted sad, so she took it back. Everybody's so creative. What? Ramon. Ramon. What is she talking about? Are you also a liar? Just two liars in a relationship? That's what's happening? 
So then they go inside the house and Loida gives us the real tea. She says that Ramon knows her full government name. So he probably will claim that he forgot it. He knows he heard my birthday. He has seen her driver's license. You've seen me. We FaceTimed. We They've Skyped and he's even called her by her government name. Oh, Lord. Excuse the fuck out of me, Ramon. He saw me. He saw me. So Neva Max look at him and they're like, what? What the fuck? Is this true? And Ramon confirms that, I almost called her Lydia, Loida is telling the truth. That did happen. I barely remember. I what? barely remember Dude. that. Neve and Max are confused, but they're also mad, understandably so, because it's like, you asked us for help because, oh, catfish, catfish, I'm being catfish, blah, 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 but I believe it's the girl in the picture. You knew that it wasn't the girl in the picture. Like, 100%. If you know her full gubby, if you were calling her by her government name, you have seen her driver's license. Like, it, the, the Lulu in denial is too much at this point. So Ramon says that all of it's true, but he barely remembers, which a lie. So Max loses it. And he even stops filming because he's so frustrated. Ramon says that he just didn't want to believe it. Wait, hold up. So Catfish was going to come in and make the Catfish be someone else. They were just going to wave their magic wands and make it so the person you were talking to wasn't Loida. Be fucking for real. How are they going to do that? Quickly. So Loida says that every single time she came clean, she ended up taking it back because Because I didn't want him to keep being hurt. He was crying. Ramon wouldn't stop crying, which I was like, why would you have to? <laughs> why'd you have to out him like that? <laughs> but then he snaps back at her and he says that she kept messing with his head, which like, buddy, you are also to blame here. She told you what it was. You knew all the details about her life. You are the one who enjoyed your fantasy much more than the reality. It's not her fault that you didn't believe her when she gave you no reason to believe her because someone was like, oh, yeah, like this is really me. And then they took it back. I'm not believing you because I have common sense. Loida then apologizes for the pain that she's caused, but then she reiterates that everything was real, which obviously it can't be real if you're lying about something as simple as what you look like. But then she says that they had an undeniable connection. <laughs> What? She says that she told him things that she never told anyone because she had so much trust in him, which obviously you would trust in him because he wasn't the liar in the situation. And I, oh. But then she said that she considered him to be her boyfriend who she is still very much in love with, which is insane. Neve looks stressed as hell and he says that they are both to blame for this messed up relationship and I know that's right. Ramon says that he has nothing else to say, so he and Neve head out to the car while Max stays with Loida and Lloyd is just crying, but like there's no tears coming out. And also like in this light, her contacts look insane. They look insane. In the car, Neve is like, okay, so everyone's going to see this and they're going to wonder why you stayed with someone. She told him she was lying multiple times. Who told you that they were a lying liar. He doesn't say it just like that, but I'm saying it just like that. So Ramon then says, and this is actually kind of sad, and also I understand why he stayed with it. He says that he does not have a social life. I didn't want to lose him. So she was your only real friend. Yeah. So he just stuck around, which is actually quite sad. And I feel like it's even more sad when you think about the fact that he kind of bought her into staying in a relationship with him and like lying to him. So like he was kind of paying her. I wonder if this is a thing. This is a serious question. Do people pay people to lie to them and like have this whole fake relationship with them? even though they know it's fake, but they just want the feeling of a relationship. Like, I'm not talking about the intimate parts. I'm talking about like this, like a catfishing scenario situation, but you pay for it. Is that an industry? If it is, I feel like they would make a lot of money. So the next morning, Neve and Max are debriefing in their hotel room. They decide to add Loida on Facebook to try and learn more about her by stalking her page. They quickly see that this crazy girl posted an engagement ring with a note that was seemingly from Ramon. Oh my god, are you kidding me? And mom left a comment. God bless your relationship today, tomorrow, and always love you guys. That's her mom. So now it is extremely clear that this whole thing was a family affair. This just makes it even more messy, like more entertaining, if you will, but also like more fucked up. But entertaining, but fucked up. So now we gotta know if Ramon proposed to Paula and lied about it. Or proposed to Loida and lied about it. 
So they head to Ramon's room and they tell him what they found and he seems a bit shocked and he says that he never sent a ring but me and Max then like poke a little fun at him. You're engaged. I'm not engaged. According to Facebook, you are. Which he deserves after lying to them. Like I would make fun of you too. <laughs> but then we find out that Ramon actually did send Loida money right around the time she made the post. So he kind of sort of did buy her an engagement ring. But this just goes to show you that they were both so fully the Lulu in denial, like so just bugging off their rockers, both of them. So maybe they would make a perfect couple. You never know. Like attracts like. Crazy attracts crazy. Delusional attracts delusional. So then they head back over to Loida's to confront her, get closure on the whole situation. But then we find out that her mom and her brother will also be there. So it's about to get real interesting. We find out that Loida's mom's name is also Loida. And to be honest, I don't see anything wrong with this. If men can have juniors, why can't women? If I have a girl, I would want to name her Jada. We could be Big Jada and Lil Jada, but I'm little. So maybe Lil Jada and Lil Lil Jada. I like it. So they sit down and get right into it. And Big Loida says that she knew that Ramon and her daughter were in a relationship, but she also knew that her daughter was catfishing. I was aware of the whole thing. The woman was too stunned to speak. Imagine, you know your kid is catfishing to secure a bag and you're okay with it. That's crazy. It couldn't be me, but it was Big Loida apparently. So Big Loida immediately gets defensive and starts trying to push the blame back onto Ramon. This guy was sending gifts. He wanted to, just to, want to. Which like, yeah, he was, but also in his Lulu mind, he was sending gifts to Paula. He was not sending gifts to Loida. Neve then gets pissed. Like <laughs> this whole episode had just been Neve trying to be sympathetic, trying to not get mad and then getting mad. And he asks Big Loida if it bothered her that a man was sending her kid a lot of gifts when he thought he was sending them to someone else. And she says nothing. But at this point, Lil Loida looks completely over everything, even though she's the source of the drama. Is it me? Am I the drama? I don't think I'm the drama. So Big Loida then gets mad and it's like, girl, why are you mad? Oh my God, there's just a bunch of crazy going on. No, 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 no. Cut it right there. She says that Lil Loida was going too far. She came clean and Ramon stopped her and told her that he didn't want to believe it, which she did not lie about that. That did in fact happen. Ramon does not address that, but he pipes up to talk about the engagement ring and Big Loida says matter of factly, he sent her that ring. When Loida opened the envelope, it had your name on it. She's just in denial about everything. If my kid, I know my kid is lying to some random man on the internet to get secure gifts to get a bag, I wouldn't believe anything that that kid says to me because you're so comfortable lying. Big Loida then comes full sass and says that Sorry to tell you, Ramon. Somebody pretend to be him and he doesn't know. And it's like, Miss Ma'am. Be fucking for real. Be fucking for real. Please be so fucking for real. Big Loida, be for real. No one is going to pretend to be your daughter's online boyfriend and send her an engagement ring from the online boyfriend who she's catfishing except for your daughter. Neve then asks Lil Loida to explain and she plays dumb. How that all happened? What happened? The ring. The ring. So Neve breaks it all the way down to the point where she can't deny it and Big Loida can't deflect blame any longer. Ramon gave her money. You went online. You bought yourself a ring. She went online, bought herself a ring. You mailed it to yourself. And then in front of your mother, you lied to her. And said that Ramon sent it to her. Am I wrong? Did I lie? Did I lie? This alone would have me yoking my kid up and taking them off camera to yell at them. Me personally, I don't believe in putting hands on your kids. But if you do some messed up shit like this, I'm definitely yelling at you and I'm taking all your privileges. You're about to be, I was going to say locked in the basement, but I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. That just came out of my mouth, but that's not what I really meant. Lil Loida then has a very nonchalant response as if to say, yeah, I did it. And what? What are you going to do about it? Max then asks Big Loida if she's surprised and she says, whatever. No, not, not whatever. Oh, are whatever. Now seeing how Big Loida acts, it makes sense that Lil Loida also acts like this. They are two peas in a fucking pot. So Max is like, um, it's kind of important, like not whatever. You're not really hearing no, everything. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Your daughter's a liar. And Big Loida continues to get more and more upset. And then we get the question heard around the world. My daughter's a liar. What about Ramon? 
Come on, Ramon! So Neve pipes up and he's like, yeah. Ramon has his own issues to deal with. I, I okay. can see that. Why would you say that? Why would you say that? <laughs> That's so messy. She said, what about Ramon? He said, yeah, Ramon's fucked up, but we're talking about your daughter right now. <laughs> he says that everyone needs to admit their issues. He tells Ramon and Lil Loida to take responsibility for what they've done. Lil Loida then says that since her dad and her grandpa died, life has been hell, but when she met Ramon, it was all sunshine, it was happy. And I personally will never understand how grief led you to scam a man, to send yourself a fake engagement ring, and then post about it on Facebook. But okay, everyone grieves differently, and we're not supposed to judge the way that people grieve, but if you grieve by doing all this i don't know what to tell you it sounds like you need therapy not a fake online boyfriend she then says that she wants ramon in her life and apologizes for lying ramon doesn't address this specifically max then asks him like okay so you met the girl that you fell in love with so what do you want to do and sidebar producers are so damn messy for this show and this just shows that they have always been messy because this is season two very early on season two the show had not been fully established yet and they put this shot of Lil loida right after Max asks Ramon, what do you want? Everybody's so creative. Just to rub salt in the wound about the fact that he don't want her. He said, we're also going to use this really bad shot of you looking crusty. Ramon says that he just wants to spend some time alone with Loida and see how it is. Which I'm like, okay, so you're just setting it up for you to be like, I don't want you, bitch. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ramon and Lil Loida get some time alone, but it's just so awkward. Which I'm also like, okay, so there's no resolution with the mom. The mom just gets to be crazy and defend her daughter, even though her daughter was the one in the wrong. All right. You can tell that Ramon does not want her at all, but he also doesn't want to be alone. So I think that's what he's struggling with right now. Like he won't even look at her while she's staring at him with eyes full of love. He then makes it clear that he is not romantically interested in her at all, but he is open to a friendship and this isn't what she wants, but she accepts because she wants him in her life. Which again, this just goes back to what I said before about how Ramon doesn't want to be alone, how he basically bought her friendship. Like the fear of being alone is so intense that he would rather keep this person around who lied to him, who took all this money from him, even though he doesn't, he doesn't even seem to like her, like he can't even look at her. And I feel bad for Loida that she's willing to accept the breadcrumbs and I'm also surprised that she would agree to being in a friendship with him when there's no longer a financial benefit for her. So they head out and Neve says that I'm not sure I'll ever really understand exactly what you guys have. And Chow, me neither. In our two month follow up, Ramon says that he's good and he has learned to be more responsible, which good. If you're going to make it in this world, you need to not give your bank information to random bitches you meet on the internet. Let's be real. He then says that he and Lil Loida don't talk because she now has a boyfriend. And he gives this very forced and fake laugh after saying that it doesn't hurt his feelings. <laughs> and I don't believe that. I think it does hurt his feelings that Loida was able to find someone to, who actually wants her for her and he's still single. I think that really bothers him. But Lil Loida says that she is no longer catfishing. She is happy in her relationship. Max then throws hella shade. You don't have to buy yourself rings and send them to yourself anymore. <laughs> but we also find out that she has paid Ramon back for everything, which is really nice considering she didn't have to do that. This is a classic catfish episode simply for this line alone. My daughter's a liar. What about Ramon? I don't like how Neve and Max didn't really get on the family who were benefiting from her lies. I think they were a little bit too lenient there. I, I just don't like Ramon. Harriet! Obviously, he's the victim in the situation, but I just got really weird vibes from him, especially at the two-month follow-up where he's trying to act like none of this bothered him, which obviously it did. Like, when she told you that she was actually Loida, you were crying. Be fucking for real. It's fine to have emotions. But also the fact that Loida was able to move on and be happy and find someone who wanted her for her after experiencing the rejection from Ramon, it must have been such a boost of confidence for her. And I feel like that was a great note to end the episode on. Thank you so very much for watching. Make sure to like, make sure to comment, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you're aware of every single time that I upload. Make sure to let me know your thoughts, your feelings, and your opinions down in the comments below because what the fuck was even this child? <laughs> I need to know what you think about the episode and then also what you think about what I think and then we could talk about it like besties do. If there are other episodes that you would like to see me cover, make sure to drop it down in the comments or you could leave me a DM on Instagram. Feel free to do that, okay? Because I'm getting ready to start posting over there again. I just need to work up the courage and build up the nerve. I don't know why it's just like such a hard mental block thing for me to do, but we're gonna get back to it. 
again thank you so very much for watching thank you so very much for being here i appreciate you so deeply and i will see you in the next video